did a Vegas realtor gun down her neighbor over some chickens? Did this happen? That neighbor, a local pastor, and in his car at the time, daddy is gunned down dead, his children. And did this female realtor then turn the gun on the victim's wife? What? Over a homeowner association dispute? I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. What the hey? Gun down over a chicken and a dog and a homeowner's disagreement? Take a listen to Pastor Ty Neal. Nicholas Nick Davey died suddenly and unexpectedly on Friday, December 29th, 2023, at the age of 46. Nick leaves his wife of 18 years, Sarah, and two children, Olivia, 15, and Christian, 12. He is survived by his father, Dominic, and mother, Lorraine, sister, Jean, and brother, Michael. I have an all-star panel to make sense of what we know about a pastor getting gunned down outside of his home. The alleged cheater, a female realtor, Joe Junio, had been posting online about nightmare neighbors for years before she took a gun and unloaded on the pastor, then his wife, in front of their children. Now, who do you think is the nightmare? Who? Alexis Tereschuk uh, is joining me. Let me go to her first. CrimeOnline.com investigative reporter, but also with me, Craig Drummond, Karen Stark, Chris McDonough, Dr. Jan Gorniak. Alexis Tereschuk, um, you know how close I am to my father who passed away. And as we were hearing his colleague, Pastor Ty Neal, speaking of the victim, Nick Davey. All I could think about was my dad. When he was 46, he was still taking me to um, basketball and football games where I'd be a cheerleader. We'd go to baseball games together. We'd do everything together as a family. These children, I mean, he was with me until after the children were born, my children. They remember my dad. These children, Olivia 15, Christian 12, and their dad is gone. I mean, they're going to be without a dad in the best years of their life. And the worst part about it is they saw him get shot right in front of them. It wasn't that it happened somewhere else and they heard about it afterwards. They were right there when their father was murdered. And you know what else? I mean, Alexis and everybody else on the panel probably knows this because I talk about my mom a lot who lives with me now. This guy is a pa was a pastor. It takes a special kind of person to live that life. Uh, I, my mom was our organist, our church organist, for 50 years and our youth leader for 20 years, unpaid, I might add, at our little Methodist church in Macon, Georgia. I mean, you have to be following a calling to be a pastor or a volunteer at a local church. And that's exactly what this victim, Nick Davey, was doing Take a listen to more from his co-pastor, Pastor Ty Neal. Nick built a warm and loving community in his adopted home of North Las Vegas after he and Sarah moved there in 2005 after being displaced by Hurricane Katrina. He followed a calling and joining Grace Point Church where he became the pastor of operations. Or as we like to call him, the poo. Pastor of operations. He's laughing. I'm just imagining his children and his wife sitting there and all over what? What happened? Take a listen to Rachel Bonilla, Crime Online. 
The Davey family's pulling out of a parking spot as Junio drives by them and, according to 8 News, parks her car right next to the Davey's car and rolls down her windows. Pastor Nick gets out of his car to talk to Junio as the children use cell phones to record the altercation. Now, something had to alert the children that they needed to take out their cell phones and record their dad. Again, joining me in all-star panel, but again to Alexis Tereschuk, CrimeOnline.com investigative reporter. There was a history between this woman, this Vegas realtor, and the pastor. What do we know? Nick Davey and his wife, Sarah, they were neighbors with this woman in Las Vegas. Her name, her name is Joe Junio. They lived in a gated community in Las Vegas, a very nice gated community. And, but they said she had been harassing them for months. She apparently had chickens in her backyard and a lot of dogs. And they were complaining about the chickens and the dogs. They were saying that they just had many complaints about them, that she was not uh, handling them well. So in turn, they say she retaliated against them for her compl They complained to the homeowners association. She was throwing dog poop in their backyard. She was trying to flood their house. And she was making all these threats against them. So they filed a restraining order. They called the police multiple times saying that she was harassing them. They were worried about him, her. And then, in fact, they felt so threatened by this, their neighbor that they moved out of their home. They moved in with some friends to, to stay away from her. So they came back to their home to gather some of their belongings in the middle of the day. You know, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, they've been there a couple hours to pick up their things. This is, you know, where the family lived full time. These, these aren't wealthy people with several homes. They were just staying with a friend and had to get some of their things. And that's when they came home and she confronted them again. All of this arising out of complaints about chickens and dogs is that correct alexis it is because she is keeping so i it is probably legal to have the chickens in the backyard it is where i live on the west coast but she was whatever the way she was keeping them was driving this family crazy it was very very unsettling for them and then she had a lot of dogs and so they filed complaints saying the chickens and the dogs were well hold on I can tell you a little bit live. about that having grown up in the country Chris McDonough joining me director of Cold Case Foundation former homicide detective host of a YouTube channel the interview room where I first met him Chris McDonough I mean growing up on a farm for me it's not just the chickens but eggs come from somewhere there's a rooster involved and you know what roosters do about 4 a.m. every morning? They're awake, and they want everybody else to be awake. Yeah, and Nancy, and you, you just wonder, you know, this pasture, how many times did you turn the other cheek? And eventually it got to the place where, you know, the devil came collecting, but it, the devil came collecting for revenge. Uh, and you just have to ask yourself, you know, what in the world uh, would motivate her, Miss Juno, to take it to such an extreme, especially with the children. In uh, the car, and know, then turn the, the gun children. on his wife over some chickens yeah. and a dog. Guys, well, let's back it up. Who are these people? How did we land here? Take a listen to Sydney Sumner. Nick Davey, born and raised in Riverhead, New York, earns a bachelor's degree from the University of Tampa. He then puts his studies in marine science and biology to work at several large public aquariums in Florida, Mississippi, and Nevada. In 2005, Davey marries his girlfriend, Sarah, but the couple is displaced by Hurricane Katrina. They ultimately move to Las Vegas and join Grace Point Church. As the family grows with the birth of two children, so does Nick Davey's calling. Pastor Nick Davey joins the staff at the church, eventually becoming the pastor of operations, overseeing the church's 30,000 square foot facility. Wow. So that's who they are. And they settle in a gated town home community. Not shabby. Listen. The Davies settle into a gated townhome community in North Las Vegas, Court of Aliante. 
Over the last year, difficulties with a neighbor make it necessary for Davey to make multiple complaints to the Homeowners Association. And that's not all. The situation is so bad, Davey calls police twice in one month and obtains a restraining order against the neighbor. The family even moves out of their condo for a few weeks to de-escalate the tensions. They stay with friends but return home as necessary to collect additional clothes and personal effects. Okay, let's get to the bottom of it. What is the law? What is the homeowner association rules, which can be two entirely different things regarding chickens and dogs? Listen. In Las Vegas, homeowners are allowed to keep up to 20 hens per single family resident. Roosters are not permitted within the city limits. Within the city limits, 10 chickens are allowed if neighbors give their blessing in riding. Homeowners are also not allowed to have more than six dogs over the age of three months without a special permit. A homeowners association may have different rules in addition to the city rules. When one of Davy's neighbors reportedly violates the rules, Davy takes the matter to the HOA. Instead of handling the problem, the violator is told about the complaint and who filed it. That's when the problems begin. Instead of doing anything about it, they apparently just rat out the complainant. Okay, joining me, as I mentioned, an all-star panel, but now to Craig W. Drummond, joining us from this jurisdiction, high-profile lawyer in Vegas. You can find him at drummondfirm.com, a former prosecutor, Craig Drummond. Craig, I don't know about you, but um, the phrase familiarity breeds contempt, truer words were never spoken. How many homicides, burglaries, acts of aggression, rapes, uh, peeping toms have been the result of sharing a fence. In other words, neighbors. Nancy, as you know, it's, ex it's extremely common, but that's the reason why homeowners associations are given powers in Nevada, just like any other state. And so they do have the power to control uh, not only the common areas, but also where a neighbor is being a nuisance or a neighbor is encroaching upon the wellness or safety of other neighbors. In Nevada, these HOAs do have some control. And so I have lots and lots of questions, given the known facts of this case. I want to know what the HOA knew and when they knew it and what they actually did. Well, I'm trying to figure out, Alexis Tereschuk, if uh, the law is that you can have 20 hens per single family resident and you can have, it says roosters not permitted in the city limits and I know why. 10 chickens allowed if neighbors give their blessing in writing and they can have they're not allowed to have over six dogs without a special permit. So, so it seems like this is, she was breaking all those rules. But also just saying you're allowed to have chickens, that doesn't mean they can be running around. Like you have to, you should build a nice coop for them to stay in. The dogs, my cousin has chickens. Their dogs keep eating the chickens in their backyard. It's a mess. This is something, this, this could be an absolute mess. And it was enough that they complained to the Homeowners Association multiple times. And she retaliated by throwing dog poop in their yard. She flooded their house. Throwing she feces a, on their backyard, flooding their home, issuing threats after they complained to the Homeowners Association. I don't know why she wasn't already in jail if she did any one of these things. And speaking of chickens, my sister, who's uh, about four years older than me, one of her most dreaded chores was to go in my grandmother's backyard and feed the chickens. Why? Because you go out there and the moment you put it in their hands, in your hand to throw it, they converge on you and like jump at you and fl fly toward you. She hated that so much she would be thronged by chickens. So my point is these chickens could have caused problems we can't even figure out. But I know this, throwing feces onto their backyard, flooding their home, issuing threats after they actually complained to the homeowners association, 
I'm looking at this photo, Karen Stark. Karen Stark is a renowned TV and radio trauma expert and consultant at KarenStark.com with a C. Have you seen the photo of Junio in a shooter stance holding the gun at the pastor? He's unarmed. He's standing there with his arms at his waist. She unloads on him. Have you seen that picture? I've seen it, Nancy. It's incredible. It's just mind-boggling to see that and to realize that someone did this because he was reported to the Homeowners Association. It's just, it's so clearly a psychopath, someone who is out to get revenge, who cannot stand the idea that anybody would report them and wants to kill murderous rage over that incident. I'm trying to figure out what the pastor lived through as he bled out, because I know this, joining me is an incredible and highly respected forensic pathologist, former medical examiner in this jurisdiction for Clark County, that's Vegas, Dr. Jan Gorniak. Dr. Gorniak, thank you for being with us. I know that Davey was shot in the stomach. So how would that shooting in the stomach kill him? So there's a, most likely he hemorrhaged. So he you know, lost a lot of in blood, so internal bleeding. So depending on where he was hit in the, in the stomach, <clears throat> excuse me, he it could have got his liver, which would obviously would bleed out, internal bleeding. It could have gotten his spleen. Wait, why would you obviously oh. bleed out if you were struck in the liver? Well, the liver is just a, a bloody organ. I mean, if you even think about beef liver in, in the in the grocery store, it's just a bloody a bloody organ. So when anybody has um, trauma to the liver, it, it bleeds. Um, you can even get, sometimes people have CPR done the wrong way and can lacerate, cut the liver and bleed out from improper CPR. Is that but why the liver case, is so dark? Because it's full of blood? Correct. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And then also, depending on the direction it goes, going towards the back, so the aorta, which is the main artery coming off of your heart that supplies the rest of your body with blood, as the, depending on the, the trajectory or the direction that the bullet traveled, it could hit that main artery, that aorta, and still cause a, a lot of bleeding. If it goes, you know, that can go straight back, it could go down, you know, and still hit a, a major artery in, in the body, causing internal internal bleeding. So that sounds like if it hits the abdomen, it's not like it got the heart, which is in the chest or the lungs. So abdominal injury, it can even go through the bowel. So, you know, what's in your bowel. So all that, you know, poop, I'll call it, you know, could end up in the abdomen and cause infection, but he didn't survive long enough. So this is a case too, where it's not a sudden death. So it just pains me that the children could see this because this isn't a case where he gets shot and then he dies right away. He's going to, you know, have internal bleeding and be aware of, you know, being able to, you know, then passing out and then eventually die. They're outside their home with his wife and children in the car. And I find it very significant. Uh, let me go to Craig Drummond as a, a veteran trial lawyer. When I get out of the car for whatever reason and our children are in the car, they don't take out their cell phone and video what I'm doing. So I'm getting something out of the mailbox or a package or speaking to a neighbor. They have no reason to think they need to video what I'm doing. But these children, when their dad, the pastor, got out of the car, they immediately started videoing him. I find that very probative. They also were in fear. Absolutely, Nancy. That is indicative of somebody in fear for their safety and not only in fear for what's going on right now, but in fear for what's going to happen in the future. And they want to document it. And yes, I agree. That shows that these children, they understood that this was not a safe situation. And they did what they could do. And Nancy. that's only pull out their phones. Chris, were you saying something, Chris McDonough? Yeah, Nancy, when we look at that photograph as well, you know, there's some um, training here that's, that she's had. 
in the past because if you look at it, she's got her legs bent. They're, they're slightly apart. Both of her elbows are locked and she's in what they call a pistol grip. Uh, and she's directly aiming at his chest area, which would cause the most damage. So she got out of that car and it was clear she knew exactly what she wanted to do. And with no provocation, because um, isn't it true, Craig Drummond, you're the veteran trial lawyer, they pull in, Craig Drummond, to get belongings. They're leaving. She comes up, cuts them off, and gets out of her cart, making her the aggressor. He gets out. He's unarmed. Now, under the law of self-defense, for instance, you can't slap me in the face and then I take out my Uzi and shoot you dead. That is force more than necessary to defend oneself. Right? So her taking out this gun when he's standing there unarmed and he's still by his car. He has not made a move toward her. She cannot claim self-defense. Also, the fact that she gets out of her car with a gun shows me she had intent to kill. Nancy, absolutely. So she, her response, even if she claims self-defense, wasn't proportional to because she gets out with a gun and totally escalates the situation. If she, let's just assume for a second that she had some sort of suspicion that she needed to defend herself, she didn't act proportionally. She escalated the situation. And I think also there's a concern that, well, she should have a concern that the restraining order might come into play as well at trial because here she's taking this aggressive action even though they have a restraining order to, supposedly to protect them against her. Guys, what more do we know that led up to the shooting of this pastor in front of his children? Take a listen to Rachel Bonilla, CrimeOnline.com. When Nick Davey files for a restraining order against his neighbor, he tells police he and his family feel terrorized after weeks of alleged harassment. The family says the neighbors thrown rocks and large amounts of dog feces into their yard, accused the neighbor of flooding their home, and during one confrontation threatened the Davey children who were playing in their backyard. The neighbor reportedly pulled a finger across her throat in a cutting motion, saying the family was next. A court hearing for that order was to take place Monday, January the 8th. So what happened to that hearing, the court hearing for the order, Alexis Tereschuk? It has been continued for for now, but the thing is, she is now also has a lawsuit against her as well as the criminal trial. I think she better criminal worry charges. about the murder case. That's what it, I mean, paramount on my mind. We're also finding out that she went online, and I guarantee you all of this will be coming into trial. And she was online in something uh, connected to a Realty Times article venting about her nightmare neighbor. Listen. Joe Junio, 36, a real estate agent, once shared a link on social media titled Avoiding a Nightmare Neighbor When Buying a Home. The Daily Mail reports the link was to a Realty Times article that explains a nightmare neighbor as someone who complains if your garbage cans are still out five minutes after trash pickup or if a dog even sniffs his lawn. When Joe Junio learned she has been reported to the Homeowners Association by her neighbors Nick and Sarah Davey, Junio launches a campaign of terror against the Davies. To Karen Stark joining me, um, TV, radio trauma expert and consultant. Karen, I find it highly probative as to her frame of mind. She's the one causing the problems with chickens, too many dogs, and she is the one who goes on to this online website and posts about her nightmare neighbor because they dared to complain to the Homeowners Association. Nancy, when you're a narcissist, you are not responsible for anything. It's always the other person. And we're also talking about paranoia, right? So you're looking around to see who's out to get you, which clearly was going on. So in her mind, without a doubt, they are victimizing her, not the other way around. And she feels that very, very strongly to the point where she's willing to commit this kind of crime and take this kind of chance without without 
any kind of doubt in her mind, terrorizing the family. You know, another Over thing happened, Alexis Therese, Chuck, apparently prior to the shooting, the shooting death of Pastor Nick, this neighbor, the realtor, Joe Junio, she allegedly ran her finger across her throat in a cutting motion and told the pastor's family that they were, quote, next. That's in she the court did. documents. She Yes, she was constantly harassing them, confronting them at their home. They were right next door to each other. And that's what uh, Sarah had said, the wife. She said she one time said to us, she ran her finger across her throat and said, you're next, which I remember, wasn't that Jody Arias that did that to you too in court, Nancy? Oh, yeah, she did. Uh, she also shot a bird at me. But that said, since she but was yes, being guarded by a bunch of armed thing. guards, I wasn't that worried about it. This is not the first time neighbors have actually murdered each other over seemingly innocuous disagreements, um, such as shoveling snow. Take a listen to Dave Mack. Okay. That's 12. When two feet of snow blankets Plains Township, Pennsylvania, about 15 miles southwest of Scranton, a long simmering feud over snow shoveling between neighbors boils over. Police are called just before 9 a.m. to reports of shots fired. On arrival, they find 50-year-old James Goy and his wife, 48-year-old Lisa Goy, dead in the street from an apparent gunshot wounds. Neighbors point across the street at the home of James Spade. But as police approach the front door, a gunshot rings out as the 47-year-old apparently shoots himself. And more. The fight started and ended with snow. Police say the Goys were shoveling the snow from their parking spots and throwing the snow onto Spade's property. Spade asked the couple to stop. They yell profanities. James Goy throws a tool at Spade and approaches Spade with a closed fist as if to hit him. Spade retreats to his house and returns with a gun. But the Goys continue yelling profanities and threatening Spade. Eyewitness reports say Spade opened fire on the couple, shooting both of them multiple times. After he runs out of bullets, Spade goes back into his house, retrieves another firearm, then shoots them both again. Over shoveling snow. And what about over trimming trees? Take a listen to our friends at Crime Online. It's Cut 16. About 45 miles north of Orlando, Florida, 42-year-old Brian Ford is trimming tree limbs along a fence between his property and his neighbor, 78-year-old Edward Druzlowski. Ford and Druzlowski don't speak much and haven't had any problems in the past, but on this night, Druzlowski tells Ford to get off his property and threatens to shoot his neighbor if he doesn't leave. Druzlowski says he pointed his gun at Ford, and the younger man said, You're pointing a gun at me. Are you going to shoot me? Druzlowski claims Brian Ford then walked towards him. So he shot him. Brian Ford dies from his gunshot wound. This over trimming trees? And what about over a basketball that ends up in your neighbor's yard? Listen. 17, yes. A basketball rolls into Robert Singletary's yard in North Carolina. And when children retrieve the ball, Singletary yells at the children. One of the children tells his father, who went to Singletary's house, and tells the 24-year-old to stop cussing his kid out. If you've got a problem, come to me, and we can work it out. Singletary goes inside and comes back out with a gun and opens fire on the neighbors. A six-year-old girl sustains a wound to her left cheek. Her father shot in the back, and her mother grazed in the arm. Singletary flees the scene, winds up in Florida, and turns himself in to authorities. Over a basketball. Now, listen to how this example escalates. Take a listen to Dave Mack. It's 14. Lenny Tracy leans a big old tire against his neighbor's fence. At first, the tire doesn't bother Tony Davis, but the weight of the tire causes the fence to bow in and creates an opening that his dogs can now get out. He leaves a simple note for his neighbor asking Lenny Tracy to move the tire. Tracy takes offense at his neighbor's request and sees this as nothing less than an act of war. From that moment on, police are regularly called for various slights and acts of aggression. Eventually, both the Davises and the Tracys file for restraining orders and install outdoor security camera systems. 
Lenny Tracy adds audio speakers pointed at the Davis home, blasting sounds of birds all night. Floodlights aimed at the Davis bedroom windows. And finally, Lenny Tracy installs an infrared light that would blind the security system installed by Tony Davis. Police believe the infrared light was a triggering event. Okay, did you hear that? Audio speakers pointed at the neighbors, blasting sounds of birds, floodlights aimed at their bedroom windows, and then finally an infrared light that would blind the neighbor's security system. And of course, it didn't end there. Listen. It's nearly 3 a.m. when Tony Davis can't sleep. He tells his wife, Cindy, he's going next door to ask Lenny Tracy to turn off the infrared lights. Davis' nephew, Josh Clinton, on Snap said, The night that my uncle Tony actually decided to walk over there, he was just like, I give up. I just want this to end. Cindy Davis hears two shotgun blasts and runs next door to find her husband Tony laying on the walkway to the Tracy's front door. Lenny Tracy comes out the door and threatens Cindy Davis as she tends to her husband. Tracy tells her to leave or she'll get the same thing. Tracy then calls 911, saying he shot a prowler in self-defense. Investigation finds nothing to back up his story of self-defense, and Lenny Tracy is charged with murder of Tony Davis. Convicted of first-degree murder for Tony Davis and assault with a firearm for threatening Cindy Davis, Tracy is sentenced to 50 years to life for the murder and 14 years for the assault on Cindy Davis. Terms to be served consecutively. Neighbors. Neighbors. Joining me right now from CrimeOnline.com is Sydney Sumner. Sydney, your father had a similar incident. What happened? So I had actually been out with my mom all day. I believe we were in a school activity or something. And when we arrived home, there were two cop cars in our driveway. And we came to find out that my dad had been outside doing yard work. It's Houston. Everybody has oak trees. And he was blowing leaves out of our driveway into the street to later collect them. Our neighbor that was catty corner to us witnessed this and was upset that the leaves were ending up in the street and physically came across the street and attacked my father. They had a physical altercation and both of the men separated when the neighbor was hurt. He was actually the one who called the police after he was injured, but neighbor's ring doorbell showed that he was the aggressor in the situation. And the cops asked my father if he wanted to press charges, press charges, and we decided that that was not the route we wanted to go. What finally happened? Um, he was in an ankle brace for several weeks after injuring himself, and we all just decided to let it go. My parents lived there for another five years or so before we moved away, and there were just always a little bit of tension in between them. I guess so. When you have to call the police to your front yard. Okay, your dad came out basically unscathed. But when you hear cases like the ones we're talking about right now, in this case where Pastor Nick is gunned down, Sydney, do you realize how close your dad was to a very, very serious injury? Yeah, we are very, very thankful that nothing escalated past that point. It can happen. Just don't get it, guys. What more do we know about Pastor Nick Davey being gunned down in front of his children? Take a listen to our Cut 7. As Nick Davey asks Junio, what is your problem with us? Junio opens her car door, takes a shooter's stance, and fires a gun at Pastor Nick Davey. Davey is shot in the stomach. Junio turns the weapon on Sarah Davey. According to Grace Point Pastor Ty Neal, Sarah goes on the offensive and wrestles the gun away. Sarah Davey is shot in the thigh. Joe Junio runs into her townhouse as 911 is called. You know, I'm trying to figure something out. Alexis Tereschuk, if all of that was caused, if all of that was caught on video, then you're going to be able to hear the pastor say, What's your problem with us? That is not aggression. No, not at all. He, he was in his car and she pulled her car into their driveway and blocked them and she got out of their car. That's when he said, what is your problem with us? Like he got out and said, why are you doing this? We are just here picking up stuff. Lee, these are not his words. He said, what is your problem with us? But his situation was they were just there picking stuff up they weren't at her house they weren't on her property they certainly weren't throwing dog poop in her yard or flooding her house 
or threatening to kill her. She did all of that to them. They were picking things up from their home because they had moved out because she, they were so – her behavior, her threatening behavior was escalating. That's what they – that's what the, Sarah said about it. You know, I, I'm curious. Um, Chris McDonough joining me, director of Cold Case Foundation and star of a YouTube channel, The Interview Room. Chris, I wonder if the pastor's family had not pressed – criminal charges before because they wanted to keep the peace. It certainly does seem that way, Nancy. And I, I think some of the signals that she was sending, they weren't quite picking up exactly. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, the fact that she's making, you know, the cutthroat uh, type of uh, gestures. I mean, that obviously indicates she has gone to the next level. And to your point, I think the pastor just took that as, you know what, let's let's just stay calm as a family, you know, and uh, she'll she'll get over this. And that unfortunately, she escalated it to the point where, again, you know, she decides to violence is is the resolution. For those of you just joining us, in Vegas pastor Nick Davy fatally shot in front of his own children, his wife even taking a gunshot herself. She lived. Now she's left to raise the children without their father. Karen Stark, what were you saying? What I was saying was I think that most people would not believe in a situation like that, that given that signal, that somebody would actually try and kill them, not that he's wrong in, a, in saying that it was a threat. But you would never think that your neighbor would actually try and kill you. However, the fact that they had to move out of their house, it's really hard to understand why nobody did something about that, why the police didn't do anything or the association didn't do anything. Very, very confusing. Another thing the pastor said as he got out of his car, quote, why don't you leave us alone? We've had enough. Apparently, the pastor shooting, shouting this at Junio as a child is recording. What's your problem with us? The pastor stated before getting out of his car. This woman, even in her mugshot, Craig Drummond, a high-profile lawyer in this jurisdiction, Vegas, even in her mugshot, she looks angry and confrontational. Yes. Uh, this lady uh, looks like she's obviously rather upset, obviously by her actions here. It sounds like she's got an anger issue. I think as the criminal case proceeds, there may be some inquiry into any other mental issues going on. Oh, don't Perhaps start, there's Drummond. a competency Do element. Do not start with me. This is a realtor who is functioning, <laughs> writing articles on some realtor, uh, Realty Times <laughs> website describing her nightmare neighbor when she's the one with a nightmare. And here you go, tuning up about a mental defect. Is that because um, there's nowhere else to go? She's caught on video doing it. So you can't say, I didn't do it. She can't say, I did it, but it was self-defense because she's armed and he's not. So what's left, mental defect? Is that why you said that? Uh, perhaps, perhaps, Nancy, you hit the nail on the head. It seems like factually with the video evidence, You're she's screwed. got a major problem. And that here. ain't Latin I learned in law school either. Man, this is a toughie. I mean, that's the only place the defense can go, right, Craig? A absolutely. It's certainly an area, if I was the defense attorney, which I'm glad I'm not, um, it's certainly an area that I would have to pursue because, again, I, I would agree. She's got a major problem here. The facts before and the facts of the event are awful and tragic. You know and what, Craig? I bet problem. she could still claim self-defense. Of course, it's not true. By saying that she felt threatened because when he got out of the car, she interpreted that, interpreted that to mean he was coming toward her. Of course, then you got to take into account that she's the one that cut them off. She's the one that came to them and parked the car. So... Yeah, self-defense is not going to work. You're right, Craig German. She's going to have to go with mental defect unless she can cop a cheap plea. You know, I, I, I'm very curious to Dr. Jean Gorniak. When someone is bleeding out from a shot to the abdomen, he's lying there on the pavement. He knows his wife. He may have seen her get shot. His children in the, are in the car. Is he wondering, is she going to shoot my children too? 
How long could he have stayed awake before he bled out, Dr. Gorniak? I would say minutes um, because usually, like I said, if it's not something that's going to be, you know, instantaneously lethal, like to your heart or to the, a special portion of your, your brain, you're going to be aware. So when you're bleeding out, first you're going to lose your blood and then you're going to, your body's going to go into shock and then you're going to pass out. You're still going to be alive, but you're going to be, you know, unconscious at, at that point. So between the time that he shot and the time that, he, you know, his liver or whatever other organs in his abdomen are, are bleeding, he's still going to be aware until he loses enough blood that causes him to pass out. I'll tell so you unfortunately, who else. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dr. Gorniak. Yeah. So, so unfortunately, he would have been aware of, or possibly even maybe not have known exactly that his wife was shot, but he probably may have been able to see it, or may have been able to hear um, screaming or commotion around him before he went unconscious. I'll tell you who else is in trouble: the HOA, Homeowners Association, because the victim in this case had gone to them to try to resolve these neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor issues, the chickens, the dogs, the feces, the flooding. Instead of addressing it and fixing it, they ratted out the victim's name to the defendant according to reports. Nothing was done and it escalated to the point of alleged murder. Neighbor versus neighbor I'm looking at an earlier shot of this family outside posing together. The son, the daughter, the wife, the husband, a pastor. Those days are all gone over this, a dispute about chickens. We wait as justice unfolds. Goodbye, friend. Guys, thank you for watching Crime Online with Nancy Grace here on YouTube. To get the very latest, subscribe to Crime Online here.